Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Before we get started on today's video, I want to announce that Come Again has two new channels for you guys to enjoy. If you're into collectible and toy reviews, then head on over to Come Again Collectibles, where all of our new and previously uploaded collectible review videos will be published from now on. Also, if you're into Funko Pops and Action Vinyls, head on over to Come Again Vinyls, where all new and previously uploaded pop review videos will be uploaded. We will no longer be publishing these videos onto the main channel due to the success of our shows like History and Origins. We don't want to upset the algorithm or the subscribers, so if that's what you're interested in, the links will be in the description below. Now on to our video. Premiering on Nickelodeon on August 11, 1991, and created by Jim Jenkins as one of Nickelodeon's three original animated series, in fact, it's been named the first Nicktoon, as in Nickelodeon cartoon, and it aired episodes on Nick until January 2nd, 1994, but continued to air reruns until 2002. Disney acquired the series in 1996 and adjusted it creatively, then renamed it brand spanking new Doug, eventually changing it to Disney's Doug in 1998. Disney aired it for three years on ABC's One Saturday Morning lineup, where it became a top-rated show. Inspiring various books, merchandise, a live musical stage show, and a theatrical feature, Doug's first movie, which was released at the series' conclusion in 1999. But even though it was successful with Disney, let's face it, the Disney era was horrendous. Let me explain. The artwork, while still good and keeping the original spirit, just wasn't the same as when it aired on Nick. Giving Doug long hair in the Disney series premiere, along with 80s baseball style three quarter sleeves, just didn't look right. And the intro, oh my god, that intro was horrendous. We go from a beatboxing, humming intro on Nickelodeon, which easily got stuck in our brains, to what sounds like someone whistling over multiple instruments. Jim Jenkins is quoted as saying, Disney bought ABC, created one Saturday morning, and began to court my company, Jumbo Pictures. So, should I stay with Nickelodeon, who is through with me? Or get bought by Disney, where we get to create 65 new half hours of Doug, a feature length movie, Doug Live for their theme parks, toys, books, additional funding for the development and production of many new series? To quote a famous movie line, they made an offer we couldn't refuse. The thing about Disney's Doug was actually pretty rare at the time. It wasn't a reboot or a remake. It continued right where Nickelodeon's Doug left off, but I'm getting pretty ahead of myself. Nickelodeon's Doug followed the title character, 11-year-old Douglas Yancey Funny, Doug to his friends. At some point in every episode, he's seen writing his thoughts in his journal while dictating via voiceover. He starts each journal entry with, Dear Journal, it's me, Doug. He's often shown as being a daydreamer with several alter egos, such as a superhero named Quail Man, Secret Agent Smash Adams, Explorer Race Canyon, Crime Stopper the Chameleon, Cowboy Durango Doug, Outlaw Jack Bandit, and Waffle Stomper, a parody of Steven Seagal. He's also one of the few cartoon characters to be left-handed. Other characters in the series included Patty Mayonnaise, who was Doug's not-so-secret crush, Doug's dog Porkchop, his best friend Skeeter Valentine, Sister Judy, Bully Roger Klotz, and neighbors Bud and Tippy Dink, among other friend and family members who occasionally showed up. Nickelodeon's Doug was released on DVD for seasons 1 and 2 in 2008, and for seasons 3 and 4 in 2009. In the pilot episode, Doug Funny and his family, Phil, Theta, and Sister Judy, come to a new town called Bluffington. After moving away from their former residence in Bloatsburg, there he meets Skeeter Valentine, Patty Mayonnaise, Roger Klotz, and B.B. Bluff and his new life in town begins. The series addressed a number of topics, like trying to fit in, platonic and romantic relationships, self-esteem, bullying, and rumors. Many episodes centered on Doug's attempts to impress Patty Mayonnaise. Jenkins developed Doug from drawings in his sketchbook that he created over the course of the 1980s, and was a mostly autobiographical creation, which was largely inspired by Jenkins' childhood growing up in Virginia, with most characters in the series being based on real people. Jenkins credits the series' odd color choices from being in a margarita stupor. He first pitched Doug as a children's book to uninterested publishers before Nickelodeon purchased the show. Following this, the series underwent further development in which Jenkins meticulously detailed every aspect of the show's setting. 
He was insistent that the series would have a purpose and instructed writers to annotate each script with a moral. The show's unusual soundtrack consists largely of scat singing and mouth noises composed by Dan Sawyer and Fred Newman. Nickelodeon's Doug only ran for 52 episodes, and its voice cast consisted of Billy West, who voiced Doug, Fred Newman, who voiced Skeeter, Mr. Dink, and Porkchop, Constance Shulman, who voiced Patty Mayonnaise, Billy West, who voiced Roger, Alice Platon, who voiced BB Bluff, Doug Price, who voiced Chalky, Becca Lish, who voiced Connie Benj and Judy Funny, and Eddie Corbich, who played both Al and Moose Leach. After four seasons and 52 episodes of Doug, Nickelodeon declined to order the additional 13, citing the show's expensive budget. The network had a two-year window in which it could reverse the decision. So, Jenkins received strong interest from several networks, among them ABC. And each time he received that interest, they would notify Nickelodeon in order to speed up ordering the series' fifth season. In 1996, the Walt Disney Company purchased ABC while also purchasing Doug in a multi-million dollar deal with Jenkins and Campbell. The deal involved buying Jumbo Pictures and signing them to a five-year contract with stock options to be Disney executives. The company also purchased the Doug trademark and the rights to all future merchandising. Due to the two-year lapse between series, due to the two-year lapse between series, there were several creative changes, such as voice casting, due in part to the voice actors' prices going up. Even most of the original staff members regard the Disney era as inferior. Jenkins was less hands-on regarding the production of the show's Disney episodes due to other responsibilities. Jenkins later said, I mostly agree with Doug fans who think the original 104 11-minute Doug stories made for Nick were the best. David Campbell felt the Nickelodeon episodes were quirkier and better, while Constance Shulman, you know, Patty Mayonnaise voice actor, felt voice recording sessions were not the same in the show's newer incarnation. I miss the game. Crammed in the studio, waiting for their turn for the big group scene, someone just dimmed the magic a bit. Disney's Doug took place a few months after Nickelodeon's series finale, Doug Graduates, and Doug's Bad Trip, where Doug and his friends graduate from Bluffington Elementary School as 6th graders and begin their first year at BB Bluff Middle School as 7th graders. It also dealt with the everyday life of the title character, as well as Patty, BB, Chalky Studebaker, and Connie Benj, as Doug tries to stay out of the way of local bully Roger Klotz, as well as his rival for Patty's affection, Guy Graham. Disney's Doug premiered on ABC as part of their Saturday morning lineup in the spring of 1996. In September of 97, it joined the one Saturday morning block along with newcomers Recess and Pepper Ann. It also ran in syndication on what was left of the Disney afternoon in 1997 for reruns then ended in 1999 with 65 episodes, which is the episode limit for most Disney TV shows and reran on ABC until 2001. Then it aired on the Disney Channel from 2001 to 2004. In this version of the series, Doug was voiced by Tom McHugh, Skeeter, Bug Dink, and Porkchop, once again by Fred Newman, Roger by Chris Phillips, Constance Shulman returned to the role of Patty, Alice Platon returned as BB, Doug Price as Chalky, Becca Lish as Connie, Judy, Data Funny, and a few others. In January 99, the stage show Doug Live opened up in the Disney MGM Studios and was performed five times daily around the time Doug and Patty appeared as meet and greet characters in the park. Doug's first movie was released in cinemas in March of 1999. It was originally planned for a direct-to-video release until Disney decided to release it theatrically due to the success of their competitor, Nickelodeon's Rugrats movie. Despite getting harsh reviews from critics, the movie was still a huge success for Disney in the box office. Disney has no intention of releasing Doug on DVD. But on November 12, 2019, Disney's version of the series was released on Disney Plus streaming service, along with Doug's first movie. Other changes between the two series include Roger Klotz has gone from being a bully living in a trailer park to a rich kid and rival to BB Bluff. Skeeter had a gross spurt in his arms. Connie lost quite a bit of weight. The Honker Burger had been sold and turned into Shea Honk, a French restaurant. Doug's new school, which was named after BB Bluff because her dad built it after the old one collapsed, opened a Mr. Swirly ice cream parlor, which became the new hangout for all the kids. The Beats, which was Doug and his friend's favorite band, broke up. And one major change was that the show became digitally colored, as opposed to the hand-painted cells used in the Nickelodeon series. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.